Good evening. Uh, my name is Paul Ruiz. Uh, I have 25 years' experience as a structural engineer and a principal at uh, Ryan Diggs Associates. And I also function as the structural engineer for the Roman Catholic Diocese of all the architectures in the Lock Commission. Uh, we've been asked by the Diocese of the Parish at various intervals since 2005 to observe uh, the various concerns with the church structure primarily and provide an objective assessment of uh, what would be needed in the pairs to address them. Uh, since 2005, the, the structural and masonry concerns with the church building proper have increased dramatically. The associated costs just to address those portion uh, of the concerns have increased tenfold in that period of time, from roughly $200,000 in 2005 to approximately $2 million at present. The, uh, the conditions uh, in the church are deteriorating at an accelerating rate. We have re recommended that portions of the site be cordoned off uh, because we are concerned the masonry could fall from some portions of the deteriorated uh, part of the building and injure some. Uh, the primary areas of concern are the deterioration of the exterior buttresses on the building and movements of the columns that support the upper walls and the roof of the building. Got a few images that uh, can help orient you. This is in the looking towards the, the front uh, apse of the church. This is one uh, instance where you can see that this column right here is significantly out of plumb, leaning in towards the center line of the building in relation to this window behind it, which is plumb. Uh, the exterior of the building. Uh, is framed such that the higher portions of the building are supported on a series of wood columns that run down to the middle of the building. It's so unlike a typical house or a simple um, structure where the walls continue to the foundation. The very high upper walls around the perimeter of the building are carried on this series of columns that run down to the middle of the building. So there's sort of a lot of weight on those, and the deterioration of the masonry in the upper part of the building is now shifting those columns. So we look, sure. So the weight of the upper part of the building is resting on these columns that run down through the middle of the, uh, the church. So in order to do repairs to the upper part of the building and correct that movement that has been occurring, we would have to shore uh, all the weight from above to be able to do those repairs. And that is what has uh, caused that large increase in the amount of repairs that I've If I can sort of dovetail on the, the Paul there for a minute. My name is Steve Rollin, principal with Butler Rollin Bays Architects. I've been in the architecture field for about 25 years. In addition to that, I've spent several years in the general construction industry um, and had the fortunate benefit of working with a, a firm that uh, specialized in uh, historic renovation and restoration work. Um, part of the complexities that we have here, if I can jump ahead a couple of slides, um, what Paul is referring to, you'll see sort of a little bit uh, more clearly here, these, these upper walls, this is the lower roof right here, and, and the outside most wall that's alongside the aisles of the church, uh, and this higher wall, which we would call a clear story wall, um, that's the weight that Paul is referring to that's resting on those interior columns. Uh, so that entire wall is, is relying on those columns to hold it up. And then if I move over here, you can see these uh, vertical members here, these are what we were referring to as the buttresses. Um, they're an uh, integral part of the structure of this building, if I can go back, there's there's one of the buttresses there. This is one of the more heavily deteriorated ones. A little difficult to see in the screen, but if you have a moment, you want to take a look at one of the pictures over here. They're a little easier to see. Um, and as Paul was relating, uh, those buttresses uh, coincide directly on the interior to that column and that column, and what we call the transept area of the church. Uh, and as those buttresses fail. Um, there's nothing to resist the thrust that the building is creating under its own own weight. Um, and therefore, those columns are getting pushed out of, out of plumb. Oops, too far, sorry. You can see the water intrusion that's been taking place on the inside, which has uh, heavily damaged the plaster in many locations. Uh, that continues to occur. Uh, and the concern that, um, that we raised uh, when, upon looking at the building was that uh, the first night Ryan Bates noticed that there was columns out of plumb was, I think, roughly 2009. 
Um, and at that time, they had to have a pump out with them in order to determine that. Uh, as of December of 2011, two years later, uh, you can walk in a church and visibly see that they're out of plumb without the use of a plumb bob. Um, so they have continued to deteriorate. Uh, and the concern that we raised was that once the masonry begins to deteriorate to the level that it's at now, it will continue to deteriorate at a rapidly increasing rate. Um, and the complexity of fixing this is, uh, is the shoring up of all that weight that we're looking at there. Uh, all that shoring that has to happen inside that building has to go um, through the first floor and through the basement floor in order to bear on grade because we can't bear that kind of weight on the floor systems that exist inside the building. So the shoring uh, design and things that have to happen to help hold the building up in order to just fix the masonry problems is a significant part of the cost there. Um, and then obviously fixing the masonry itself is a labor intensive process. And uh, in our report, we uh, reported that to stabilize that and bring that back up to basically an empty shell again, um, and repair all that masonry work, including all the shoring and everything, is roughly a two to two and a half million dollar project. Uh, when that is said and done, uh, we still have a, a, an empty church building um, that has all systems that are antiquated and need to be replaced. Um, and that still doesn't even include repurposing the building potentially for something else, um, which will probably still run you know, several more million dollars to repurpose that building to condos, retail, whatever it might be. Um, so there's where, I think, sort of where we came from. Uh, and our concern is that it's going to continue to deteriorate uh, at a much more 